Hello everyone. I'm Terry Duncan and we're going to make a birthday card today. It's my granddaughter's birthday coming up and she loves beaches. So I thought we would go with Gina K Designs products. I love this stamp set and I've not used it yet. So I thought we'd do a little water coloring with it. The name of the stamp set is Window on the Water. It does have a die set as well and we'll probably use a little bit of that as well. I have got a, a Misty here for the ready. We're going to do some stamping. I've got a number of colors that I may or may not use. I've got bubblegum pink, Bellini, peach Bellini, and innocent pink. And then I have a couple of blues, powder blue and blue denim. And then I've got some browns, the sandy beach and craft. So I do have an empty watercolor brush that we're going to use to paint with. I do have an eyedropper full of water and just a, a glass of water to clean my brush with. Then I have some waterproof ink. Gina is amalgam ink and the obsidian color is fantastic. Uh, this is a brand new set, so I'm going to use Versamark to condition my stamp. I do have a die from Master Layout 5 that I'm going to use. And then I've got a piece of watercolor paper cut to, it's a half a sheet uh, of normal cardstock size. This is watercolor, so uh, I had to trim it down to five and a half by eight and a half. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is score this watercolor paper because I've got a plan for what I'm going to do with this card. And that is to use the die to cut out the window on the front and it'll show a scene behind that, a beach scene behind that. Okay, I'm going to use a bone folder and I am going to score this at four and a quarter. I am going to stand up for this because I tend to miss the line. Just carefully score it. I'm not going to fold it yet, but I want that line so I can plan out where I'm going to paint on the front and on the back. I just put that scoreboard away for now. This is going to end up being the front. My frame is going to be about there. In fact, I think I'll use the grid on my mat to help me make sure I'm centered with that. And then I'm just going to use a pencil to lightly mark where that window is going to be. And I'm doing that so that I can paint on a frame. Uh, without covering too much of the background. So there we go with that. So I'm going to take my powder blue. I'm just going to smush that just a little bit onto my work surface. I do have a glass work surface. And I'm going to use my dropper to put a little bit of water next to that. And then I'm just going to mix those together and I want it to be just a very pale blue. And I'm just going to lightly wash I'm going to need some more color, I think. So I'm not wanting to color the whole wall. I just want to add a little color so it looks like there's a wall there. You might not even see it, but we'll know it's there. 
Okay. And I did fail to mention that you should always have a piece of paper towel by your side when you're watercoloring. So I'm just using that to, I'm dabbing my brush into the water and brushing it off on the paper towel to clean that. I'm letting that dry just a second and I'm gonna clean up my blue. And then I think I'm gonna go with charcoal brown for the frame. So again, I am going to smush some of that onto my work surface. And this time I'm going to put a little more water down on my work surface, but I'm going to use very little of that. And I'm just going to paint, like I said, I'm just going to paint a frame. Now, I don't have to care about the inside. I'm really wanting to create lines that make up the frame on the outside of the window. So, wow, that's really dark, but that's okay. So it's just a hand painted frame that's going around that window. So there's our frame. Now, the reason why I don't care about the inside is because I'm going to cut that out, right? Although. It is going to use, it is going to cut a frame. So I want to, I'm going to need to add some more brown using charcoal brown. It's looking kind of like a hot mess right now, but when that dries, I think it will do exactly what we want it to do and that is to look like a window frame. Now I think I'm going to add in a little more blue because that is really pale. Get the brown cleaned off and I'm going to add in a little more blue wash around the window. A little more color. There we go. I'm going to set that aside to dry. So what my thinking is, is that I will use some vellum to add draperies over the top there. So I'm going to need both these windows. And I am going to use my Misty. And I'm going to use a little piece of vellum. I happen to have a scrap here that I think will work perfectly. And because we're going to die cut these out, it doesn't really matter how they're laid into The misty and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use pigment ink. I've got this ivory pigment ink and I'm just going to stamp that so that it's not too dark but you can see the lines. So, 
I don't need the Versamark because I'm using pigment ink. I'm just going to ink that up real good. It doesn't really matter if I get some extra somewhere. So I don't need any anti-static. And then I'm going to heat up emboss this with clear embossing powder. Perfect. So normally I heat up my heat tool for 40 seconds before I heat emboss, but with vellum, I don't wait that long, maybe 15, 20 seconds, and then start to heat emboss. So here we go. Okay, so now I'm going to die cut those out. I will get the dies. Just get those centered in there and I'm going to fasten them down with a little bit of easy C tape. I reuse mine, so I've just got it up here ready for to use. Okay, and I'll get my die cutting machine here. There we have our draperies. I'm just going to heat set that a little bit just to make sure that it's dry. Don't want to use too much heat. And I feel for any cool temps which would indicate that it's still a little bit wet. Now I'm going to go ahead and die cut my window. Now I get this centered. Get my die cutting machine. That cutting machine actually helps to flatten out the watercolor paper as well. So here's the moment of truth where we remove all the die cuts. I'm going to use a knife.
get it. So there is my window. Now I'm going to go ahead and fold this on a score so that I can tell where my scene needs to be. I'm just going to make sure that fold is good and solid. And now we're going to do something similar to what we just did earlier. We're going to use our pencil and just make some little marks so that we know really wh where we need to cover with what is now our scene. There we go. So With this, I'm thinking that, well, we know that we're going to need the beach. So this is going to have to be kind of like there. And I don't think I'm going to put much of anything else in there. So that I just pick it up right where it's at. And now for this stamp, because I've never used it before, I'm going to condition it with my Versamark. And then I'm going to use my waterproof ink, which is my amalgam. Obsidian is the color, it's a black. making sure I didn't get black anywhere else so that it doesn't get on the back of the card. And then I'm just gonna lightly press just to see. Yeah, I think that is going to be perfect. And I think that will do it. And we're just going to heat set that ink so that I can keep water coloring. Try not to warp the card. Now, what I think I'll do first is color in the blue. And so I'm going to, I'm going to, um, zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing here. scene. 
This is going to be what it looks like when the window closes in front of it. Okay, so I think what we'll do next is put some acetate on the back of this window to, uh, to strengthen that up a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do is cut the piece of acetate about a half inch larger than the opening on this window. So if I use my grid, so four and a half inches by three inches. That looks better. And then what I'm going to do is use my double-sided tape to fasten that down. Very hard to see. That make sure that's fastened real well. And then I'll use my craft knife to pick up the backing paper. And we'll just set that down over the window on the back side. Now you could put a frame around that to um, make it a little better inside. So this is what this is looking like. Probably should have put a little glue on that. The greeting that I'm going to use is birthday wishes from the winter branches set. No, I'll put it down here. So I'm gonna get my big Misty back again. That inside. I am going to use two magnets to hold this open so it doesn't flop. And then I'm going to use my transparency grid to make sure I get my sentiment straight. And I do want it to kind of go over into the sand a little bit. Instead of stamping it with black ink, I'm going to heat emboss it so that it's shiny and kind of stands out. Ink it up real good with my watermark ink, which you can't see. And then I'm going to stamp it real good. And because this is watercolor paper, I'm going to stamp that again. I didn't do a very good job of cleaning that stamp. I'm just gonna stamp that image one more time. I failed to put anti-static. So we'll see what happens. About half of my cards are like that. And we're gonna to have to be real careful because that 
acetate is on there. Let's set for a second. What I was afraid of. it all off and then we'll heat set this and this time I'm going to heat it up for 40 seconds and I'm just letting that cool a little bit and then I'm going to erase my pencil markings I have just a plastic eraser that I'm going to erase those with Okay, we have one more thing to do, and that is to add in or attach our draperies. I've debated whether to use just adhesive tape, but I think I'm going to use glue. And I'm going to just dab some dots. I've, I'm using Barely Art glue. Uh, I'm doing that because I don't have my Gina K Connect in, a, in my small bottles like I should. So I'm just going to dab on dots right along this window frame. And then I'm going to attach the drapery and I'm going to have it go just right over that line. And that's the only place I'm going to attach it. I'm just going to hold it for a second to make sure it fastens down on there. And I want the draperies to kind of flow freely there. There we go. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the other side. Just dots of glue so that they don't, there's not too much. And just, just like that. There's one other thing I think I'm going to do, and that is I'm going to use some colored pencils. I have Prismacolors here, and I'm going to go with some greens because I want it to be kind of dark. So what I have is dark green PC908 and olive green PC 911. And I want to make sure that those are very sharp. I do have Gina's favorite sharpener here, the Orbit. And what I'm going to do is just enhance these wisps of uh, grass that's, that are coming out of the sand. And you, you see, I'm just using slight little flicks And what that's doing is adding a little bit of color that you can barely see. And it's reinforcing the stamp design. And I'm just 
kind of flicking over where the stamp is. So we're adding a little bit of olive, a little bit of kind of a deep teal. And you don't lose anything. You're actually adding to what we already stamped by doing this. Let's see, I think I'm going to go with a little bit lighter too, just to add some interest. We'll try two different colors here. I've got Lime Peel PC 105 and Marine Green 988. And I think the, just going to test this. Yeah, that's not light enough. That's what I wanted is just um, a little bit of sunlight. And a couple of them. There we go. So with that, our card is finished. I will uh, put this under some weight to flatten it down and just uh, let it settle a little bit because it is, it is warped a little bit like you would expect with watercoloring. There's the inside of the card. Uh, I'm very happy with how it turned out. I may go ahead and use my die cut to cut out a piece to back that up. I probably will and just snip off the, the frame. Um, but that's what our card looks like. Thank you for joining us today, and until next time, have a great day. Hope to see you soon. Bye.